just want to uh, pray for some people this morning. Uh, love to just pray. Just, just keep playing, David. Do an amazing job. And uh, just want to pray for some of our farmers. Um, David's dad, Rodney, is working seven days a week at the moment, just continually feeding. And we want to just pray for our community right now. We've got uh, some great, we've got amazing times coming up. We've got uh, elections coming up soon. And uh, there are a lot of people be wondering who to elect, who to elect, and just a lot of power shifts in our nation right now. So, and God is definitely working here. There's no doubt about it. Um, so one of the things what we want to do is right now is just going to start to pray for the farmers and just start to pray for our community. So why don't we just close our want to stand to our feet and, and just hold our community, hold our nation before the Lord this morning. There's uh, men of God that are standing and fasting for our nation this week. And so we want to be standing together with the body of Christ and believing that this will be an hour where the Holy Spirit will be poured out. Father, today we hold our city, we hold Hawke's Bay before you right now. Father, we hold every business owner, we hold every farmer before you right now. Father, we will hold our, our family that are involved in agriculture and farm. We will hold Rodney and Marie before you. Lord, I pray that today, Father, Lord, that fresh water, Lord, that fresh power, Lord, that fresh grace will come over our lives, come over this nation, come over our region today in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you, say in your word, by the blessing of the righteous, the city is exalted. So, Father, we speak blessing over our community right now. We speak blessing over the region of Hawke's Bay. Come on, lift your voice, somebody. We speak blessing over our young people. We speak blessing over the farmers. Father, we speak blessing right now over, over, uh, over the educators in Jesus' name. Every business owner, we speak and release blessing over your life. Every beneficiary, everyone that's unemployed. Father, today in Jesus' name, Lord, I pray for new innovation. Father, for new ideas to be released over this nation, to be released in our community today in Jesus' name. I pray right now, even for new business people. Father, for the new ideas to be released. Father, I pray for faith and courage to rise in the hearts of your people. Lord, that they would arise in this place. Father, that would bring prosperity to our region in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for this great land. We thank you for this great region. We thank you for this great city. We thank you for the opportunity to be your ambassadors, to bring life into this community. Lord, I pray that faith would arise in our hearts today. Hawks Bay, we bless you in the name of Jesus. I bless every church, every Jesus worshiping church in Hawks Bay. We bless you today. May you experience the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hey, just remain standing. I just want to pray for those specifically in need today. There's a scripture God placed in my heart was in, in Acts chapter 2. Day after day, they met in the temple, continuing in one mind, breaking bread in private homes. They were eating together meals and jo with joy and generous hearts, praising God. Uh, and it's, oh, sorry. Uh, and they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing the proceeds with all the believers as anyone had need. There was in the New Testament church, there was no one that was in need. How about that? Nobody that was in need. If you are here today and you are struggling, if you are here today and you are struggling to put food on your table, I'm not going to call you out. And, I, I mean, that's, I mean, we've been in that position before. I know what it's like. I know it can be tough. I know how embarrassing it can be. I'm not going to call you out by any means. I'm not going to embarrass you. But however, what I do want to offer you is this. If you are here today and you are struggling, you're struggling to meet a, a bill, you are, you're struggling with debt, you are struggling specifically with food. Uh, if you're a mom, you, you, you need food for your kids and you're struggling to get that to happen, I want to know about it. I want to know about it. I want, we, want, we, want to be, we want to be able to help you. This is a New Testament church. There's plenty of food in this house for everybody. There is no reason, no reason that you should be hungry. There is no reason that you should be without food. There's no reason why you should be ex trying to explain to your children that mummy can't provide this or daddy can't provide that. I don't want to see that. If this is your church family, this is, we are brothers and sisters. You are family. You are my family. If you are here today, you are struggling. Maybe you are slightly older. Maybe you're struggling to pay a power to give. Just whatever, please. God has placed it in my heart today to bring this to you to say, we want to help. I want to help you today. And um, so like, I'm not going to pull you out, but however, if that is you, or you know somebody that, that you just know, they just need help. There's food in this house, I can tell you now. There's food in this house. There's, you do not need to walk alone in this. But if you would have the courage to come and say, I need help, there's help available. And um, there should be nobody here 
Nobody here struggling to find food for your kids, struggling to find food for yourself, trying to feed your family. At the end of the day, there is food in this house. There's plenty of resource amongst the body of Christ. If you're needing accommodation, you just gotta come out and say it. If you're looking for a job, there's people know other people. This is the house of God. This is a great ecosystem. You've just gotta say, this is what I need. And somebody else can say, well, this is what I've got available. There should be nobody here in need. So, please be seated. Please be seated. I just want to bring some people out to you. So, Tavani, Tavani and Moira, just stand up. Just stand up. If you're Tavani and Moira, if you, if you know them, uh, got a relationship there, if you, here's, somebody, here's a couple that you can go to and say, here, when, they'll talk to me. Uh, there's, um, there's Peter and Sandy. Look, there's lots of people. There's Brian, Brian Neils involved. Stand up. Yeah, Brian and Tony, just stand up. Uh, Marlene and Bruce, stand up. Look, there's plenty of people here. If you've got something to offer, if you need help anywhere, if you're struggling for food, please talk to me. Talk to one of these people here. We want to be able to help. Amen? Amen. Thank you. God bless you. I'd love to just uh, share with you this morning what I felt the Lord placed in my heart. And uh, these are... How many people enjoyed uh, Michael Nicholas last Sunday? How about that? And he was just outstanding, and he's a, he's a very close friend of ours. Um, he'll be coming regularly. Uh, he's he's one, of, one of the guys that I go to for, for advice. He's, he's part of my oversight team. And uh, so he's a really good friend. But he really picked up on what I believe the Lord is speaking to us about. And I want to open that up a bit more for you uh, this morning. And uh, one of the things that really, uh, I, I believe it's most important for every person is to have a have a, uh, to, to discover a sense of purpose for their life and, or discover a sense of meaning. And everybody is called for a ministry. Everybody is called to be used by God. There's not one person that's not. And being used by God is not just about being up here. Being used and called by God to have an impact in this world, uh, it, it is not just about platform ministry. This is only just, this is only maybe 5% of it. And uh, every person here is called to be a channel of the goodness of God. It doesn't matter whether you're still struggling with a cheeky cigarette or a cheeky beer. It doesn't really matter. God is not scared of that at one little bit. It doesn't even worry him if you struggle a little bit with, uh, with a bit of a potty mouth or anything like that. It doesn't really, I mean, by all means, try and get a hold of your tongue. But God still wants to work through your life. And you, when you look through the history and you see who God used, who God called upon to to, uh, to bring life and, and to bring his healing power into the community. You got people that were murderers, you got people that were, uh, you got potty mouth fishermen that would uh, not back down from a fight one little bit, yet God saw goodness inside of them. I mean, you look at Judah, I mean, if Judah himself was alive today, I can, I can assure you today, he will be the all time heavyweight UFC champion. And he was. I kid you not, he was the man, there was nobody alive in the world at that time that could beat him. He could bring down kings of horses. I can tell you now, he would be the UFC champion of the day. Yeah. So there was nobody that got, and none of these people were pastors, none of these people were ministers, but yet God called them. You see uh, people who are involved in all sorts of involvement in the community, yet God used them powerfully. And so I want to assure you today, it doesn't really matter what you're struggling with here right now, I want to give you a key that can help you find a great deep sense of fulfillment and how you can know that you're being used by God. And that's one of the greatest thrills that you can ever have in your life. And one of the things that I personally do is I'm grateful for the opportunities that God has given me to be able to carry his presence. I mean, who would have thought somebody like me could, um, could, could go to such crazy places and, and bring the gospel to Al-Qaeda territory, the, to bring the gospel to, um, to all sorts of weird and wacky places. That's awesome. And that's available for every person here. I want to open up the scripture here with you this morning and, um, uh, in Ezekiel chapter 47. And then he brought me back to that. It's quite long, so I'm just going to kind of skip, skip through it. But Ezekiel chapter 47. And, it, and so the prophet Ezekiel has a vision of, uh, of what the kingdom of heaven is like. The Lord showed him the kingdom of heaven. It says in verse 1, he brought me back to the entrance of the house and I saw water flowing eastward from under the threshold of the house. For the house faced east, and the water flowed from under the right side of the house, south of the altar. And next, he led me through the north gate and took me around to the outer gate, and by the, east, by the way, the east gate. Kate and I have seen all this. It's quite amazing. And when I saw water trickling from the south side, 
Then with a line in his hand, the man went outward from the, towards the east and measured a thousand cubits. And there he made me wade across the stream. Then the water came up to my ankles. He measured out another thousand, then he made me walk through the water, in which reached my knees. Then he, weighed, he measured out another thousand, and it made me wade through water up to my waist. Finally, he measured another thousand, and it was a river that I could not cross on foot. Because the water was so deep, one would have to swim across. It was a river that could not be waded through. It was that deep. Then he asked me, he said, young man, have you seen this? And then guiding me, he got me back to the riverbank. After being returned, I saw on the bank of the river a great number of trees on one side and on the other side of the river. And he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and continues down towards um, the Arava, where it enters the sea and the sea of stagnant water. In other words, it's the Dead Sea. So it flows down through here and into the Dead Sea. And that, that water, that Dead Sea water will become fresh. When this happens, swarms of all kinds of living creatures, somebody says all kinds, all kinds of living creatures will be able to live wherever the streams flow, so that there will be a vast number of fish, for the water is flowing there. Somebody say it's flowing. It's flowing. And so where, where the river goes, everything will be restored. Where the river goes, everything shall be restored and shall live. Everything, not part of it. Everything shall live and be restored wherever the river flows. Then fishermen will stand on the shores and spread their nets all the way from Engedi to Engalim. Engedi, we, we went there as well. It's an incredible place. And there'll be as many kinds of fish as there are in the great sea, a great variety. However, its mudflats and its marshes shall not become fresh, but remain salty. On both, river, on both riverbanks, say both riverbanks. Both riverbanks will grow all kinds of trees for food, for food. And their leaves will not dry, up, nor will their, root, will their fruit fail. There will be a different kind of fruit every month. A different kind of fruit each month because the water flows from the sanctuary. And so this fruit shall be edible and the leaves will have healing properties. Quite a piece, long piece of scripture, but I want to just open up a little bit. One of the things, this is a, a, a prophetic revelation to, shown to Ezekiel by the Spirit of the Lord. And what it is, it's a metaphor of what the kingdom of God is like. It's a metaphor. So what he, although he sees it in a vision, uh, often other people have seen, have seen what Ezekiel has seen as well. But it is a metaphor, a metaphor or something to describe what something is or how something operates. So whenever, um, whenever we're presented with a metaphor, it's a way of illustrating the nature of something. It's a way of illustrating how something works, how something functions, how something operates, what something is like. So when the, you see all through the Bible that uses metaphors, Jesus used metaphors to describe something. Doesn't necessarily mean it is what it literally is, um, is told, but nonetheless, it is, the, the deeper meaning behind it is that it is an illustration, it is a metaphor. Somebody say metaphor. It's a metaphor. You all know what a metaphor is. So when we look at this now, we've got to look at it in the eyes, not just a literal sense, but we've got to look at it as, an, as a metaphor. It is describing the nature. It is describing the flow of something. And when we understand how something works, it gives us the capacity to be able to flow into it. And so this morning, what I want to do is I'm not just going to talk about water or anything like that, but I want to help under, open up your understanding so you see how it can apply to your life and therefore how you can be a carrier of the life of God. Because when you understand this, your life carries a whole much deeper sense of purpose. You understand ministry. What, I mean, when you think about ministry, he's describing ministry right here. So whatever our idea of what it means to be a minister of, of, of the gospel, widen it. Dismantle it, and we've got to relearn it. Because for many people, even in today's world, uh, I, I, I know right now, I've listened to churches, I've listened to messages that, that portray the idea that once you are up here ministering or speaking or doing something there, then you have made it in ministry. I can assure you that is false. That is not true. Why? Because it brings people into an illusion that they have to get to this place before they're seen as successful in ministry. I can assure you that is not the case. Not the case. Not the case. God has called every one of us to be a minister, but God has called us, he has positioned us with unique giftings in order for, for, to fulfill a unique purpose to him. And you'll be surprised. And when I open up this for you this morning, so hopefully that you're not all going to desire ministry, desire to be used by God, but don't just don't see this is the place that's going to be the be end and end all of everything, because it's not. Hello. 
many of you know this. So one of, one of the things we can learn and discover patterns for living a kingdom life. We can discover purpose and we learn what ministry is. We can see that we're all called to be ministers of, of Christ. So one of the first things we see is that right at the beginning it says there was water that was flowing. Somebody say water that was flowing. One, obviously, water is this. Water is the life source. So whenever we look about, uh, whenever we read water in the Bible, look at it as what it's symbolic of. So it is symbolic of the source of life. So when we think about water is flowing, it is, it is the life of God that is within us. Whenever you read water, it, it, like if, 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 if the world does not have water, everything is dried up. So we can, the lack of water is that of a drought. So you can think about of, of people in a spiritual drought. If there's no life of the Spirit moving, there is a drought. It could be in green grass around you, but actually spiritually, there's an absolute drought. So when we, whenever we see water flowing, or, or, or the Bible speaks of water, it is identifiable with life. And one of the things you can see that, that the water itself is moving. There's water flowing. There's no good water, the life of God just being stagnant. The Bible says down the track, when the life of God becomes stagnant, when, when it stopped flowing, when it stopped moving, you stop getting healed, and all starts of mosquitoes and diseases start to grow there. And so it's important for us as Christians is this, is that we're, as, we're, as we're believers in Christ, that there's got to have momentum, there's got to have movement in our, inside of our life. When the, the next thing you see, that there was an outward flow of water. An outward flow of water. That is totally contrary to where many of people live in the world today. For many people, whether they would say it or not, actually the, 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 the pattern of their life describes it's all about me. It's self-centered. So it's completely opposite to a self-centered lifestyle. It's not all about you, and it's not all about me. It's, it's about the life of God flowing through us. There's an outward flow. There was an, the whole nature of, of, of this pattern, of this illustration, is that it's an outward flow. Somebody say an outward flow. Outward flow. Outward flow. Whenever, you, whenever there's an outward flow, you'll find that there's healing and restoration. One of the ways I got victory over areas of, and of pain in my life was just to get the outward flow happening again. I could... I could sit in the pond and, and, and get this and get min that, that ministry and this ministry and this prophecy and that prophecy, but nothing was changing until I opened up the gate, until I opened up the block and said, actually, I'm going to deal with my rejection. I'm going to deal with my fear. I'm just going to start to flow again. The moment I started to flow is that there's, I started to get healing again. The healing came in the flow. So for some, some people, you've been in Courses to the cows come home, but you've just got to get some flow happening to your, into your life again. You've got to get some outward flow flowing through you, out into other people. Invite somebody into your home. The Bible says that he who has friends must show himself friendly. It does not say he that has friends must wait and, and post stuff on Facebook complaining how lonely they are, waiting for somebody to invite them into their No, the Bible doesn't say that. It says those that have friends must demonstrate hospitality or demonstrate being friendly. The cure for loneliness is to be able to demonstrate, to get a flow out of you. Boom. <laughs> Interesting, one of the things it says here, you see here in verse 3, it says the depth of the river, how it increased. So the depth of the river never, it never remained the same. So when you look, when you actually see this in a diagram, the depth of the river didn't increase in depth that way. From bank to bank. No, it didn't increase that way. No, it increased. The depth of the flow increased the further it went out. You're with me this morning. You're with me this morning. Interesting. So the more the, the river flowed out, in, in other words, the more it flowed out to the goal, the deeper that it got. The more it stayed closer, the shallower it was. See, the Bible says that it came out as a trickle. But the further it got away from the altar, the further it got away to the goal, the further away it got to the Dead Sea, the deeper it got. In other words, here's an illustration. The deep things of God are not going to be found here. The deep things of God, where you get carried, where you get uh, fulfilled, it's, it's in the community. People talk about the deep things of God, but there's no outflow of their life. You're amusing yourself. According to Scripture, according to the pattern of God, the depth increased and the width increased the further it went out. Are you with me this morning? So it tells me, surely if you want to be involved in ministry, 
where the deep stuff is, where the good stuff is, is out in the community, is out in the world, bringing the mahi, bringing the life of God into the community around us. That's where the deep stuff is. That's where you'll discover the deep things of God. Hello. Are you with me this morning? I'll say that again. The deep things of God are not here. Sometimes it challenges because actually we think actually the deep encounters and things happen here. No, not necessarily at all. So wherever it was flowing out, and so the impact increases the more that we go out. And then it says here, uh, I love this, and he says, he then asked me, he got, and then he brought me back to the riverbank. He brought me back to the riverbank. So one of the things we've got to ask uh, when we look at this piece of scripture is say, what does all these things mean? So one, we can see that the, there's water, there's the, represents the life of God. Two, there's, a, there's an altar that's somewhere. And three, there's a riverbank somewhere. So what is the riverbank? Where is the church in all this? And I believe this. He brought me back to the riverbank. And one of the things you know about a riverbank is this. There's a parallel. A riverbank always has two sides. There's always two. All right? So the church is not at the beginning of the stream. Not necessarily. I believe this, the church, for us collectively, we are the riverbank. One of the things you'll notice is that riverbank extends from the temple all the way to the sea. And there's two sides. In other words, this. It's not just about one side, and it's not just about the other side. It's not just about what we do collectively, but it's also about what we do privately. So on both banks, and when we talk about the church, one, I am the church. Two, you and I together are also the church. So collectively, there's a parallel. In other words, what we do personally and what we do collectively matters. Together, we make up the church of God. Together, we make the channel that brings the life of God to the nations. Hello. It's together. One of the things you know, there's always a parallel that happens in our life. What's going on inside of our hearts and what's going on and around us. The things that we don't see and then the things that we see. So one of the things you can see all through Scripture is there is parallels. One of the things that we, what we do in our heart, what we allow Christ to do in our heart, and how we behave on the outside, there's a parallel right there. You think about the church. Again, the church is a parallel. I am the church. We are the church. It's both end. But one of the things that you know is both of them flow from the altar to the sea. It's not just here and only here. It's here all the way to the sea. So it comes from the place of an altar all the way to the sea. And it's, it's not just a matter of a few paces. I can tell you, the journey from the, the altar to the, to the Dead Sea is quite a, quite a distance. So it tells me this. One, at some place there has to be a source, and that source is the altar. So it tells us this. At some point, there has to be, a, in our internal life, we have to build an altar before the Lord. There has to be an altar in our hearts before the Lord because it's the source of all this life is our relationship with the Lord. There has to be an altar. There has to be a time when we come before the presence of God and say, Lord, use me today. Lord, use me. Let my life be a, a life that carries your presence wherever you have placed me in the distance between here and there. Let it be the whole way. <laughs> Collectively as a church, this is why we come together. So it's not just, it's not just individuals, because if it was only individuals, he would only say, uh, there's only one riverbank. You just do what you want to do. No, it's not about that. There's two riverbanks. So what I do personally and as an individual also affects in the whole. So as a church, that's why we have an altar. That's why we come together as a church. That's why we come together here today to collectively come and build an altar before the Lord so that collectively, we, uh, collectively and individually we form both sides of the riverbank that goes from the altar collectively. Because only in about a half an hour ago, uh, in about half an hour's time, Every one of us will get outside that door, and at some point, we're going to be in the space between the altar and the sea. The altar and the life of God does not stop. At this point, it's the trickle. When we get out the door, at that door there, when we go into the schools, when we go into the marketplace, when we go into the businesses, when we go into the entertainments, one of the things you know about society is this is that there's the, the church that we have here, but then we go out through the church. There's our family, there's, 
there's the marketplace, and this is a message for another time, but it's just to give you an idea that most of our life is lived in the marketplace. Most of Jesus' miracles were done in the marketplace. The glory of God is called to come to the marketplace, not just to have a whole bunch of shaking here. It's about carrying the altar. It's about carrying the water, the life of God, into the place where it's most needed. The ultimate goal is that it will be poured out into the Dead Sea, that which was as dead, and restore all things back to the Father. That means, that means this. We take the water that we have from our personal life with God. We take the water that is poured out from here, the trickle that comes from here. We take that, and as it comes out of that door, it multiplies. It increases in volume and increases in depth if we are willing to carry it. So here is it. Wherever God has placed you, so all of us have a moment where we have to come to the altar, every one of us. But it's after that point what will we do with the life of God inside of us? Maybe you're here today and you're a hairdresser. I can assure you right now, you are called by God. As you touch, as you lay hands, you can just sit there and cut hair like that. Or you can be aware of the presence of God inside of you, that you're a river, that you're a channel of the life of God. And as you touch head, as you touch head, there's some people that experience, oh Lord, I just pray for your healing power. You don't even know, you don't have to be silly about it. You just know in your heart that, Lord, let your healing power come and touch and bring life and bring encouragement to people. And maybe you're in a place of business. I can, talk, I can tell you now, the miracles that happen in places of business, that's where the life of God operates. What about the entertainment industry? God not into entertainment? Absolutely, of course he is. What we need right now, what the Lord needs is people that will carry the life of God, what they, what they receive in their, in their time with the Lord, that they receive an impartation, they receive life, they receive power, they receive uh, his grace, and then they, from either here or in their personal life, and then they take it into the marketplace, they take it in the inter- entertainment industry. I can assure you now, I can assure you now, when, when somebody is famous in the entertainment industry, you look at how many people listen to what they say. They only have to just say a few words and all the tabloids are onto them. Talk about an audience. So the bottom line is this. If your ministry, if you're called into the entertainment industry, carry the life of God into it. That, here's, this, here's the thing. That is why we are building um, a studio upstairs. We're, building, we're, near, we're halfway finished a recording studio. My heart is that it's not just about recording stuff. Or, yeah, absolutely not. No, it's about creating an environment for the new singers, the new songwriters, the new rap artists, the new entertainers who will carry the life of God into this. I'm going to create an environment for them so they can come and we can discover the river of God inside of them. There's one of them here right now. Where's Joshua? Come on, Joshua. Come on, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> come on, my man. Come on. This is his first time here. I know. This is Joshua. Come on, man. We're going to talk about some, some of the new kind of music that God's calling us to. Remember you and me up in the studio the other day? Yeah, what do you want me to do? You know that little rap? You want me to do it? Yeah, man, let's do it. <laughs> you know, the, listen to this, man. Don't wait for tomorrow, do it now. Tomorrow now, do it now. Do it now. Hey, why do we got to lose somebody before anybody will pray? Why do we got to lose somebody before anybody will pray? What do we got to do better than if we get together? Mother, what a pretty good, we need a bit of help. Trying to get it together for the breakthrough, Lord, for them and for me and our families. Go put on my armor. Ready for whatever may come my way. Shadow, whatever the devil want to try to put up in the middle, make me fall. I forget about him in a hard time. God, the spirit of David and me to be victorious. Awesome, right here. Sorry, my man, I just, but that's awesome. I want to see people, new ideas, new creative ideas. I want to see our business people here arise with new business. You see what, um, where's my sister Jo? Where's my sister Jo, Jo? Jo Donnelly. Jo Donnelly. You want to see what my sister, come on, Jo.
So I'm just going to make this. I'm going to make this real today. We could do the worm together. Yeah, we're we'll telling you. But my, Joe, I mean, you did something in the, in the education sector. You don't have to go into all the details, but you brought the life of Christ into the education system. Yeah. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you did? I mean, I, sorry, I'm. Well, I guess it's just it's advocating for our children for what seeds are planted yeah. in their lives, what um, what they're hearing, what they're exposed to, and how we can bring actually what God says about that. Yeah. The truth. So it's to do with, give us a hint. <laughs> you, you probably can imagine. No, to do with growing and, and what's, you know, um, the transition to becoming an adult. Yeah. So what's happening through the education department and so you, and it wasn't just you, there was no, a bunch of other mums no, as well. No, it wasn't, wasn't just me. No, um, it, was, it was sly what was brought in and it wasn't the school necessarily, but there is agendas behind it and... You know, the, the closer you looked at the information, you just thought, wow, like, these children are way too young to be having these seeds planted in them. Like, we have to actually stand up and say, you know what, like, this is for us to teach them. Mm. We're going to teach them the truth, not, not what the agenda wants to teach them. So, It's the deep things of God right there. Right, you. Lisa. Lisa. Tell me about what you felt the Lord placed on your heart in the, um, in the correction space. Come up the front. Um, so I've gone through a personal journey myself this year, my, me and my children, um, impacted by corrections. I, I love them, um, but I've got somebody I love in there. Um, and so I've seen a need in the community um, for support, particularly around children, when a parent is imprisoned, there is no support in Hawke's Bay. So I had it on my heart that the Lord was really beating me hard um, to birth this ministry charity. It's very new. It's, um, we're only just getting our feet on the ground. But to really support these children first and foremost... Um, and the mums and dads that are, that are left behind to raise these children um, through counselling, food. It's a grief. It's a real grief when a loved one um, gets locked away. So, yeah, that's, that's, awesome. that's basically what we're up to. That's the deep things of God right there. That is life flowing from the temple, from the altar, to bring healing. Man, I got way off track. I love it. A great number of trees, you and I, the trees, were planted in the riverbank. You know, the Bible speaks of blessed are those that are planted. Trees are planted. And uh, we are called to be, I, I love this, it says there are, there are trees all along the riverbank from the temple all the way to the Dead Sea. In other words, there was people serving, there were people, you look at the nature of this tree, these trees here, they were saying, there were trees of all kinds, somebody say all kinds. all kinds. There were all kinds of colors, there were all kinds of culture, there were all kinds of trees, they were not all the same tree. You look around here, you can see trees of all kinds. The question is one, are we planted? Those that are planted in the house of God, they will consistently bear fruit. They consistently, once you connect, when you, as long as you stay connected to the life flow of God, connected to the altar inside of your heart, connected to covenantly relationship with, with, the, with the family of God, you'll find that there are, you're, there'll be a prosperity around your life. As I love this. He says that there were uh, there's trees of all kinds on both sides. The trees are, are all the way from the temple to the Dead Sea. In other words, there were trees that were serving up here. There were trees that were serving on the car park. There are trees that are serving uh, as in the kids' ministry. There are trees that are serving and, and, and producing fruit as cell group leaders or connect group leaders. But it doesn't stop there. There are trees that are serving in the community. There are trees that are serving in the civil 
uh, civil officers of the trees that are serving and the government. There are trees that are serving and producing fruit in the sports arena. There are trees that are producing fruit in, in motorsport. Yes. <laughs> there are trees that are producing fruit anywhere. The question is, is the tree producing fruit or is not? It doesn't really matter where it is. It's where God has positioned you. Pro trees that are positioned in government places. God, all of us, one, come to the altar. We receive the, 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 we all have that moment. But then it's up to us where the Lord positions us. If he positions us here, it's fine. If he positions you in the marketplace, that's even better. If you're a business owner, you are a tree that's called to bear fruit, produce fruit. What you do is not just make money, but you generate life for a lot of people around you. You produce water, you produce, you become a well that produces life and encouragement and you can bring blessing to the community around you. Here, here I'll just open it up. If you look at the spheres of life and the impact, you look at Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19, verse 8. Jesus sees Zacchaeus setting up a tree. He was hungry, he was searching for something, he was searching. And as Jesus said to him, Zacchaeus, I want to come to your house. He didn't say, Zacchaeus, you need to repent of all your wicked ways. You need to stop smoking, stop betting on those horses, stop talking trash or anything like that. He didn't say anything. He said, I am going to your house for a kai. Uh, you're cooking, by the way. I'm going to your house for a kai. And, and Zacchaeus comes down. And then look at the response of Zacchaeus. Look at the response of Zacchaeus. He, re he just changed his heart. He changed his head. Look, I'm just going to give everything that I've stolen back, and I'm going to return fourfold. In other words, you look at the impact of a changed heart and somebody who, who, who's in the civil sector. The, his change of heart affected the whole economy of a whole area. That is why it's important for, if you're in the sports arena, awesome. Just always hold on to the fountain and the, the altar of God in your heart. Be a channel of God's blessing into that space. If you're a business owner, be prosperous. Make as much money as you flipping can. Well, then in a good, you know, in a good way, don't, don't exploit people by any means, but use yourself as a channel of God's blessing into the community. If you're in politics, if God has called you into this politics space, get in there and be a, don't be an idiot, you know, please. But, <laughs> have some sense around you, have some wisdom, and have a clean lifestyle for heaven's sake but carry the life of God in there. And it's in the education sector, wherever God has placed you, take the gospel, take the good news, take the river of God into that space. If you look at my, my grandfather, John Campion, my grandfather, he was, a, he, was a, he was a businessman, he was an accountant. He retired at age 55. And, but he used, he, he had a sense of the call of God. He has a sense of purpose over his life. Even though he is dead now, what he invested his life into and to building an environment, using his business to, to also create an environment to, that would touch young people's lives. That was El Rancho. Years after his death, hundreds of young people are still being impacted by what he sowed and what he invested his life into. Here is a businessman. He, he did some lay preaching on the side, but mostly he was in business. But God used him to be a channel of water that even after his death, he, hundreds and hundreds of young people are still getting their lives touched. That's the kingdom of God. That's how the kingdom of God flows. He didn't try to be anyone else. He just connected his life to the Lord. He taught, he taught us how to pray. He taught us how to read the Bible. He sat beside us and, and took us on adventures and did things with us. He became a channel of life into our lives. Very rarely. I don't know how often he preached. I mean, he maybe preached here once or twice. But, but yet the impact of his life still touches hundreds and hundreds of people across the country. It's the river of God. But there was a time in his life where he had to pay a price, where he had to come before the Lord and build an altar in his heart before the Lord the best he knew how. Every person here is called to be that. All of them produce fruit. The Bible says not just once a year, but there was one, there was always fruit present. And two, there was a new crop every month. You think about the creativity. So it speaks of creativity. There was, it's not just once a year we produce something and do something good for the world. No, no, no. All the day, every 24 hours a day, there was good fruit on our life. That's what God calls it for us. When you, live in, when you and I live a life that carries the, His presence inside of us on a day-to-day -day basis, there's fruit always on our life. And I love what he says here. He said it wasn't just a change of fruit every year, but it was a change of fruit every month. Every month there was something new. In other words, 
this day we're singing these kind of songs, but this over here, all of a sudden church has changed and it's, and it's expressed in a completely new, different way. Hello? One minute we're singing how great thou art, and next thing you know we're singing what, 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 what? <laughs> You want me to do the worm? The goal is that it flows to the Dead Sea. The Dead Sea speaks of our, our world that is around us. It is the key place of value exchange. And the business owner would under, understand this, is that if we need anything to be alive and to be successful, there has to be a key place of value exchange. And whenever you talk about the value chain, often the salespeople are right on the front edge, but behind that, you've got a whole pile of people that are working behind the scenes to, to create value, to add value, to multiply value, till it gets to the point where at some point there's a value exchange. It's a the whole business idea, but the principle is still, it is still the same. For us as Christians, there's, there's somebody that works over here, there's somebody that works over here. No one's less important than the other. The point is that we're all doing what God has called us to be and called us to do, that, that we're all carrying the life of God and we're not turning into a swamp. I'm not trying to compare what this person's doing and I want to be doing that, but no, no, God's called you there. Be there. The end goal is this, is that... Uh, the end goal is that the life that we carry empties out into the sea, empties out into the world, that affects the world for good. All along the riverbanks, there is blessing, there's restoration, there's healing, there's creativity, there's value that is added and multiplied, but the end goal is this, is that all things are restored back to God. The, all, the end goal is that all things are restored back to the Father, that the entertainment, that sports, that music, that business, everything, that uh, environmental care, everything is restored back to the Father and that Jesus gets the glory, not us. That's the end of the, that's the end goal. That everything that I do, it somehow has to flow out and make the world a better place. Otherwise, it'll become a swamp. The Bible speaks about living water. In John 4 and John 7, Jesus speaks of the living water that flows from our heart. It is not water that is potted or put into a container. The difference between, this is what we learned in Israel, was this, about what living water is. Living water is something that flows naturally. Living water is, when Jesus speaks about living water, it is not something that you just put into a pot and carry from this place to another place. In other words, you can't download it from the internet. <laughs> you can't go to a course and then all of a sudden you've got, no, it doesn't work like that. You catch a little bit of it, you get a taste. But living water, you can't pot. In other words, it has to flow naturally. It has to flow through, it flows through relationship. So when you see living water in, in, in Israel, you see there's a source and it's naturally channeled all the way to where it needs to go. It doesn't go by a pot. That's the difference between living water and non-living water. So for us to be carriers of that living water, the primary way the living water is carried is by relationship. And the way we, res we keep relationship is by honor and respect. It's right relationship when you honor those that God has placed around you or over you, under you, around you, wherever it is. When you, when you bring honor, when you bring honor to your employees that are under you, when you bring honor to the people that are around you, you'll find that it's a channel of opening up the grace of God that flows. There are people that I have around me, there are people I want to make sure that I honor my staff, I, I, I care for the staff. I'll, if I have to, in fact, most of the times I can wash their dishes. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Because actually, the resurrected Messiah can still prepare meals for us disciples. That's what it's about. He honored them. See, honor and love and respect keeps the life, it keeps the living water going. The start point is the altar in our heart and as a church family. Still allow God to position you according to his purposes. Because the ultimate goal, like I said, is to restore the world back to the Father and Christ gets the glory. We'll just finish on this last scripture. Colossians 1, verse 17, 14 to 17. It is through his son Jesus that we have redemption. That is, our sins have been forgiven. He is the visible image of the invisible God. He is supreme over all creation. Because in connection with him, we are created, we're created all things. So in connection with Jesus, all things were created in heaven and on the earth. The visible and the invisible, whether thrones, lordships, rulers, authorities, 
They have all been created through him and for him. He exists before all things and he holds everything together. He holds everything together. So there's nothing sacred and unsacred. Actually, he holds everything. He holds everything. He holds politics. He holds the sports arenas. He holds business. He holds entertainment. He holds the corrections. He holds schools. He holds this. Everything is created for him. And at the end of the day, all things will be restored back to God the Father. So I encourage us today, wherever God has placed you, make the absolute most of it. Whether you're a hairdresser, an electrician, a plumber, a tradesman, whether you're in banking, politics, accounting, sports, entertainment, wherever you are, wherever God has placed you, one, always remember to build an altar in your heart. Come before His presence. So Lord, let your life flow through me today. Let, let, let me be a channel of your goodness. Let me be a channel of your mercy. Let me be a channel of your life, your resurrection power into the world around me. As I work with my clients, I pray that today that their lives will be deeply impacted. I pray that they would experience healing. I pray that they would, as I cut their hair, that they would experience the peace, that they would, that they would share their hearts, that they would find healing, that they would find water, that they would find fresh life. I pray, Lord, that as I race my car at 200 k's, <laughs> as I rev that engine, Lord, you get the glory. Make a mighty sound. As we build the studio, Lord, let it be a place that becomes a place where people discover unique talents and giftings. And people, new songs are written. Lord, as we build the kitchen out there, Lord, let it be a place where people's lives are, are nourished, not just with natural food, but also spiritual food. Help us, Lord, not just to have a kitchen, but to own the farm. Help us, Lord, not to just be able to help people out with a few dollars here and there, but Lord, help us to own the bank. Restore the banking back to God. Restore the finance industry back. Stop people being exploited. That's all life. Why don't we just stand to our feet? Why just lift your hands? You can either just lift them up a little bit or just put it right up. Whatever you want to do, doesn't matter. But I'd love for you just to right now, just open up your heart. Just focus on the Lord. Just all things restored back to Him. I'd encourage you right now to build an altar afresh in your heart. You, you are a channel of His wonderful goodness, that you are a channel of His presence, that you are a channel of His life, regardless of where you are. It doesn't really matter if you're still having the cheeky cigarette or even the odd joint. Hey, look, whatever. I don't endorse that by any means. So don't. What I'm saying is don't let that inhibit you from being a channel of God's blessing. He's not a, afraid of that. He's not afraid of if you've got a potty mouth or a little bit like that. God called people like that. He's calling you. It doesn't matter. Your life will change on the way. Just point towards Him. Just point your heart towards Him. Father, I pray for every person here today. Lord, that every one of us would have a fresh encounter with your love, have a fresh encounter with your presence. Lord, I pray that the river of God will just not just come as a trickle from our heart, but, but, but grow into a, a mighty river that touches and brings healing into the dead sea around us. Lord, speak blessing over every heart here, every life. Speak blessing over this church, over this family, what you've called us to be. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful altar of your presence. Lord, I even pray right now as we are gathered together, Lord, that fresh water, that fresh ideas, that fresh life would come and fill your hearts of your people. Fill with fresh joy, fill with fresh peace today, fresh confidence, fresh faith today in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, come on, all God's people said, come on, let's worship on one more time.